Let's get right into this. My name is Maxim Cruz and we are coming to you live from Miami, Florida. Everyone is losing their mind about what's happening with this virus. And yes, it is a serious matter to be taken of. So go ahead, protect yourself, boost your immune system, whatever you got to do to do it. But, uh, you know, life still has to go on. I believe we're a human species and we're going to beat this thing and we're going to come out stronger on the other side. So today I will be talking about home-based businesses. As you have probably seen by now, and as you might have experienced, if you've been working somewhere physically and your job, your actual day-to-day -day activity includes you being present at a location and that location is no longer open or temporarily closed for the time being while we get through this situation, you know, you're probably seeing home-based businesses on the rise and you might have even gotten a hundred of your friends or relatives who have a home-based business to probably spam you, as I would like to call it, offering you, hey, you know, come and join this brand new thing. It's going to be amazing. Everyone's working from home. You were so dumb that you didn't take advantage of this. Look at, and, and that's the wrong approach. Okay. Number one, that's the wrong approach. So no matter what situation you're in, if you are an employee that works for a business, if you have a business that is being affected by it, or if you are on that journey into entrepreneurship or you're already an entrepreneur, this can help you, okay? This is based on home-based businesses, but it's not only home-based businesses. Now you can apply this to any business that's out there. Usually I like to take away the word home-based business because a business is a serious matter, right? Home base, it's a different definition for everyone, but when you look at the two words, you're saying, hey, it's based at home. Well, depending on what you wanna do, and I'll get into this in the next section, depending on what you wanna do, I personally, my wife, we didn't want a home based business. Why? Because for the next 20, 30, 40 years, we did not want to be physically at home doing the business activities that are necessary we wanted a business that will allow us to travel the world internationally here in the united states wherever it is that we want to go and still operate a business so when i look at it i don't want to define a home-based business like you're stuck at home right a lot of people call it the home-based business because you could work from home but i like to look at it as working from anywhere so as a lot of you know, my primary way of business is real estate, right? Real estate brokerage. But again, we're not talking about real estate here. Uh, for me, the reason that I chose it is because real estate is a mobile activity. Even with everything that we have going on, I don't necessarily have to go into an office. I don't necessarily have to be at my home. I could be traveling. I could still be doing real estate related activities via my cell phone, via my computer, right? Just getting it done. So let's dive right into it. And this video is broken up into five sections. So I'll go through each one of the sections first. The first section are book recommendations. So it's always good to read and it's always good to change your mindset and be open to new ideas. So the first one is book recommendations. The second one is principles of business doesn't matter what type of business you have and you will agree with me once I go through this all of these principles apply to any sort of business number three is risk versus reward number four is going to be how to choose your home based business which is probably why you're watching this and then number five will be general tips from my experience on what I went through and kind of you know just recommend a few things that you might not have considered all right so point number one book recommendations the first book that i always recommend is the bible right you want to turn into the bible or whatever it is that you believe in you know i haven't read the quran i haven't read all of the spiritual uh books that are out there but the bible specifically it talks about occasions where you know israel in the old testament the whole nation of israel right they went from being prosperous to being slaves to then again being prosperous to then again falling into slavery 
so this back and forth so I certainly believe that God created us to have dominion over this earth and to be a slave to a job or to be a slave to a certain enterprise is certainly not fun right you want to have control of what it is that you're doing so the Bible is a great reading source the next four books okay there's three books specifically by Robert Kiyosaki the first one is Rich Dad Poor Dad which was published in 1997 again if you're an entrepreneur or you're somewhat into business you might have read this book so again if you haven't go and check that book out book number three cash flow quadrant that was written in 1998 cash flow quadrant is an uh, an annex to rich dad poor dad because there you can pretty much understand what the difference is between income and liabilities or you know income and expenses so same thing with assets and liabilities so that's a key book to understand in anything that you do in business the fourth book is called business of the 21st century again by robert kiyosaki 2010 um, and that will get you more in line with this home-based business idea and then the fifth and uh not the final book because there's always books to recommend right the fifth book which will greatly help you in your personal finances as well as in business is uh, by George S. Clayson, Richest Man in Babylon. It was written in 1926. Remember, in the United States, we had the Great Depression in 1929. So we went through all of that stuff. And again, we had a, you know, we had the 2000.com bubble, which, you know, I lived through. Uh, I'm just talking about recent events. But every 10 or 15 years, we've had these corrections or large things happen in the market that everyone is like, oh my God, we're in an economic crisis. And it seems to repeat itself over and over and over about 10 to 15 years. That's just what the standard has been. So the richest man in Babylon, it talks specifically about investments, talks specifically what to consider when you're doing certain type of investments. And again, I think those five books, if at least you could start with that, will get you pointed in the right direction, all right? So let's get into the, the meat and potatoes of what this video is about. Principles of business. And again, if you're watching on Instagram, I might go off the frame, but this is available on my Facebook page as well as on the YouTube, which you could find the description in the bio. The principles of business. I truly believe any business that you dissect, any for-profit business that you dissect is gonna have these things in common okay and if you disagree with me if you think that i'm missing a point or if you think that there should be something else on this board please comment and we'll go ahead and add it to this section in any future videos that i do all right uh the first thing that i want to identify is what is a professional okay a lot of you are professionals at what you are doing you might be a professional truck driver you might be a professional uh, janitor you might be a professional construction worker you might be a professional plumbing assistant you might be a professional nurse you might be a professional attorney the word professional to me as I understand it does not mean a white collar you know uh, tie and suit type of individual okay I have great respect for the individuals that are out there that are cleaning the streets that are out there in the sewers dealing with literally crap every single day that are out there cooking the food that are out there delivering the thing right a professional as you look it up in the dictionary is an individual that is engaged in a specific and in a specified activity as one's main paid occupation rather than a pastime okay it's important to understand this because again for example one of the things that i personally love is i like to go fishing i haven't been fishing in a while but i like to go fishing now there are professional fishermen out there guess what their specified activity for their main paid occupation is to fish right that's what their main activity is and that's what they get paid for they're a professional fisherman that's totally fine that's the definition of one's profession okay so get that out of the way it's the main source of activity a lot of individuals get into the home-based business 
as a pastime, as a side activity, and that's completely fine, okay? A lot of individuals eventually transition from their full-time position to a home-based business becoming their main source of profession, and that's totally fine. A lot of individuals do that, and a lot of individuals actually leave their main profession, leave the side pastime in this home-based business, and they start a whole different thing which isn't home-based, which is a whole different type of business, right? But it gets them into that entrepreneurship spirit, right? So there's different steps and everyone is at a different, uh, I don't wanna say level, but everyone is on a different uh, pace or in a different step of that journey, that entrepreneurial journey, and that's totally okay, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. All right, the principles of business, this is, I believe the same in any for-profit business that you look at. One of the things, one of the top things is marketing and advertising, okay? A lot of people talk about marketing, but what is it? Let's break it down. The a very, very basic definition is get people to know about your product or your service, okay? It's as simple as that. If people know what it is that you do, that's marketing or advertising, okay? The next portion in business is sales. When people know what it is that you do, you facilitate those people in acquiring and obtaining your product or service. Simple as that. Again, an individual comes and says, hey Max, you're a you know, real estate professional or you do credit repair. I need help with this. The next step is sales, right? I have to figure out what it is that that individual wants. Why is it that they're interested in that product or service at this time, right? What is, what is their major pain point? What is this solution that I have going to solve? If I don't have the answer to those questions, my product or my service might not be the best one. Same thing for a lot of businesses. A lot of businesses waste their time up here and they can't even help the client, right? They, if somebody comes to me right now and says, hey, you know, I have, uh, you know, my leg is sore and I have, you know, my, my bone inside is itching and it's bothering me. How can I help them? I'm not a doctor, right? I'm not a professional trained in this field. I have no idea what's going on with them. I have no experience with bones or itchiness inside. How am I going to be able to help them, right? I have to say, sorry, I can't help you, but let's Google a doctor together or something along that nature, right? So that is sales. So once that individual knows about your product, says, okay, your product or service sounds like a great solution for what they have, let's go and do business together, right? At that point, they become your customer, your client. Then what you have is customer service. That's actually where you help people use your product or your service and take care of their needs, right? As long as your product or service can solve that other person's problem, then guess what? They're probably gonna continue paying for whatever it is that you provide. If your product or service doesn't solve their problem, they're not going to pay you or they're going to cancel whatever it is that you're providing. That makes sense, right? You're probably doing it right now with whatever product or service that you're like, well, I don't really need this thing. Why am I paying for it? Let me put it on hold. That makes complete sense, right? You don't wanna waste your money on something that's not working for you. Same thing, if your product or service doesn't solve that person's problem, you might have additional problems where they'll come back and they're like, hey, you know what? Your product or service doesn't solve my problem. I want a refund because you're not solving my problem, right? And legitimate businesses should give those individuals a refund. The next thing is administration. Ensure your business has a process for all of the above. And this entails a lot of items. So again, for example, marketing and advertisement, what's the process? Do you use a company? Do you use internal advertising? Do you have specials? Do you have certain things? Do you use Facebook ads? Do you go door to door sales in order to do it, right? Once you see an individual, do you have a sales process? What questions do you ask? Do you do surveys? Right? Do they need to fill out a customer questionnaire in order for you to match the right product to the, to the right service that you have? Right? That's a sales process. Once that customer becomes a customer, you know, if they need to communicate with you a customer service, do they have a phone number? 
How do you communicate? Do you send automated emails? Do you communicate by text? Do you communicate by web? Do you have videos available? X, Y, and Z, right? All of the businesses, they need to have this in place because if you're gonna go and figure it out as you go, it's gonna cost you a lot of time and money. Uh, another thing is accounting. Account for all the income and expenses, including taxes, okay? You have to know what your numbers are, right? And this is where uh, the next line is gonna be probably why you are go into a for-profit business. If you're gonna run a non-profit business, I'm not your person. I don't know anything about non-profit business other than they're supposed to uh, spend all of the money that comes in in things that actually help out the the people that come in through that business and that's why they're non-profit because they don't profit anything from what goes on right they just get whatever a hundred thousand dollars in and a hundred thousand dollars goes out in their products or services right now this the last item is profit so if you want make sure that all of the above items is profitable what do i mean by that once you do your marketing and advertising, once you do your sales, once you have your customer service, you have your administration, you have your accounting, if you had $98,000 that came in through this marketing and sales process, but you spend $108,000 through advertising, the salespeople, the customer service, the administration, the accounting department, including taxes, guess what, you're in the red right you're in the red ten thousand dollars so your business is not profitable okay versus if you had the same ninety eight thousand dollars but you spend eighty eight thousand in all the things that we just discussed your business would be profitable ten thousand dollars right so pretty pretty simple so these are kind of this the basis points that all businesses no matter if they're home based no matter if they're virtual no matter if uh, what type of business structure you have going on you're probably gonna see all of these things, okay? It's, it's basic, okay? All of these things are basic. There are professionals that spend 100 years studying marketing, and that's completely fine. They're professionals in that. That's what they're good at. As a business individual, I don't care if you have a home-based business, these things at a minimum, I think you need to understand because if you believe, hey, I'm going to go and start a home-based business, and from here to two weeks, I'm going to retire and I'm going to become a multimillionaire. Well, you better have some of these things in place and your solution better be extraordinary, you know, in order to do it. All right, let's get into the next point because uh, I see that we are running short on time. Risk versus reward. Okay. The good news and the bad news is that there's risk in everything. Sorry, I had to take a sip of water. Stay hydrated, everyone. There's risk in everything that we do, right? No matter if it's going outside and walking your dog, right? You, there's risks involved in that. If you're going, uh, I don't know, when you're growing up, I'll just tell you my life story. When you're growing up, and you're thinking of going to college there's risk in going to college right what if you graduate and that's not really what you want to do for the rest of your life there's risk involved in that right then once you go and proceed into your career and let's say you go and you do a job there's risk in your job you get into your car at six o'clock in the morning you drive through two hours of traffic to get into a place of work right you might get into an accident going to work. So there's risk of going to work. If we're going through an economic crisis or something else is going on and all of a sudden your work lays you off, right? There's risk in that. So there's risk in everything. Same thing, you're driving back home, you get a flat tire, you're trying to change your tire on the side of the road. There's risk that if it's you know sub-freezing temperatures outside, you might get a cold, right? There's risk in everything. Home-based businesses and businesses in general have risk. And some of them have higher risks. Have you heard this expression, the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward? That's probably right, right? Because a lot of individuals, they go out there and they take massive risk. And then after a lot of years, which again, time is risk because we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. So from here 
until the next day, until the next day, until the next day, something might happen. There's risk in time. So those individuals that take the risk now, as they move forward on their path and they start to see, hey, I'm becoming more and more successful, they see that reward. So the sooner they take that risk, the sooner they might experience that reward. So that's risk versus reward. I just wanted to say by that because a lot of um, people that I talk to, and I have no idea where my eraser is, a lot of people that I talk to don't consider risk versus reward. Let me see if I find my eraser. Do you see it? No. Just had it in my hand like two seconds ago. So that's fun. Let's see what's going on. Let me just see who's on here. Okay, okay. No, that doesn't help. Uh, where's the eraser? Oh, it's here. I got it. All right, we got our eraser back. So we've been doing this for a few minutes now. So I know there's some time crunch on some of these platforms. So we'll go ahead and do it. And if you want a picture of everything that I'm erasing, I'll get you a picture. It'll be up on the... YouTube, let me know if this is helping you. Let me know if you agree with most of these points that I've done so far. As far as the book recommendations, 90% of, no, I think actually 100% of the books that I mentioned you can get online on YouTube for free, okay? So next thing, you know what? As much as I love to talk about home-based business, I'm gonna erase this, this home-based stuff because it's, it's bothering me a little bit because, again, I, I, I'm not a big believer in home-based businesses because, again, right now, home-based businesses are good. But four weeks from now, do you really want to put yourself in a business situation where, you know, you can't travel? Or two years from now, when all of this thing is over, do you really want to say, hey, you know, I have this business, but I can't go anywhere because I have to be in the office doing X, Y, and Z, or maybe you're a, a construction worker and I can talk from experience and you're like, well, I have this business, but unless I'm there in the office or I'm out there selling construction services or I'm out there dealing with accountants and dealing with the subcontractors, things don't really get done, right? So that's a, the next step is evaluating, you know, how to choose a home-based business. And again, everything that we talked about marketing, advertising, sales, customer service, all of that stuff. I'm going to get into uh, here in, in one of the points. So the there's really only two points on this one. And believe it or not, this was really hard. I thought about how to do it. So I just said, okay, I'm going to call this 1A, which is supply versus demand. Okay. So supply versus demand. And let me do all the ones because all of these three go together. It, it's not necessarily in this order, but I just wanted to go ahead and put this all as number one and talk about it as three different points and C is skills. Okay. So what to consider in this, you know, today, if you're looking for a new business, okay? All of these three have to be combined together, okay? Supply versus demand. I know a lot of the people probably, if you're watching this online, you might know who Ty Lopez is. He talks about underwater basket weaving, right? Like basket weaving might be great, okay? There's a, a, a supply and demand for that. People want baskets, right? There's probably a passion for that because you like baskets. And there's a skill involved with that. But underwater basket weaving, who really wants that service or that product, right? And again, I know he uses that example all the time and it's so far out there that I think it's just a good example to use. But anyways, supply versus demand. Whatever it is that you're gonna get, if you're gonna get into any sort of a home-based business, an opportunity, a franchise, something like that, okay? In the book, The Business of the 21st Century by Robert Kiyosaki, 
he talks specifically about the direct sales or the network marketing industry and why does he talk about that because remember all of the things that i just mentioned the marketing and advertising the sales process the customer service the administration the accounting and what you're actually gonna profit from each sale that you make all of those things in a direct sales in a network marketing things have already been solved for you and again if you hate direct sales and if you hate network marketing that's fine do something else but wouldn't you agree with me that you still need to have marketing systems sales systems customer service systems accounting systems uh you know stay profitable right all of that has to be considered so uh the supply and demand the demand has to be there right now a lot of people there might be a huge demand for this work from home work online industry but the product has to make sense right if you're gonna be it, it, uh, the product that you're supplying if it's coming from china and everything right now is stopped and you can't get the product unless it's a really really good product or service and there's a whatever four month wait time well you know people might not really want it for a month from now they might not want it from china or whatever things will pass right we're gonna figure this thing out products are gonna get clean don't worry don't throw everything out just because it comes from china i'm not suggesting that right i know some people are gonna do that but whatever that's a whole other topic so you know supply and demand what is it that people need is there a use for it right the next thing is passion and again we're trying to figure out on how to choose right next thing is passion for example uh, a huge uh, industry in the home based business is the nutrition and supplements business right it's one of the biggest out there guess what if you're not passionate about you know supplementing and drinking this you know the ketosis stuff and drinking all the shakes and all the fruity and making sure that it comes from moringa and all of these other teas and all that stuff you know like if that passion doesn't come through like what how are you going to be able to market and advertise and sell and deliver the good service to the people that need it right you're probably not going to be that excited for it and then the third one is skills what skill do you have right now that you don't need to go out there and learn that you can apply in your home based business. Let's say you are really, really good on your computer and you could send emails and then you have the Facebook Live figured out and you could do that. Well, maybe for you, a home based business that works well is with digital products because somebody that is good with digital technology that already can type on the computer is really good with that, they're good if uh you know you're really good with talking to people in person and you like to do uh you know meeting people and seeing what it's about and providing them with a solution and you're passionate about the financial services industry well you know that's that's another good thing right now you might have those meetings via zoom or skype or something like that but you're passionate you like talking to people if you're an introvert like myself i'm an introvert right Sometimes you, you might not really know what you want or whatever, or, or you're really good with sports or whatever. Guess what? There's probably a home-based business out there that is directly related with some sports or active products that you can go and become a part of and promote it through the marketing and advertising that's there, through the sales that's there, the presentations, all of that stuff. So, you know, take a look at what is it that you have. Number the one is combining all three take a look at your skills take a look at your passions and take a look at what the market needs supply and demand if you have you know i think all of these three have to come together um and i think you could be like i think these two i think this has to be 50 percent, and this has to be 25 and 25. And let me tell you the reason why. It's because again, that whole underwater basket weaving. Let's say you're 100% skilled at 100 uh, at underwater basket weaving. It's 100% your passion, underwater basket weaving. But nobody out there needs that product or service. You have a supply and demand problem. 
So I think there's a heavier weight on this one than this one. But I, uh, at the same time, I believe that if you don't do something that you're passionate about and you're following this thing, for example, um, not to criticize, again, don't take this as a critique. Again, I was gonna say it, but I'm not gonna say it because I don't wanna discourage anyone from looking into that sort of business. So let me think of another thing. If uh, the business that I'm looking to become a part of, um, geez, I don't even know what to say at this point, is selling air, air in a can, which again, if I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna go and search this. If somebody can go on Google and search it and type it in like, is there a home-based business where you sell air in a can, that would be really, really funny if there was one. But if I'm gonna go sell air in a can, the reason I say that out of a backstory is because one time my wife and I were traveling and we're at the airport and there's this little metal jug thing on a jig, right? And it says, you know, fresh air from this country. And we're like, really, they're selling air in a can? Okay, well, whatever. If there's really a business for selling air in a can and you want to become part of that industry, if you're you know, if there's a so huge supply and demand for it, but you're not passionate, you don't have the skills to really know why the hell are they putting air in a can, like myself, why would I buy a can of air from whatever country it's coming from, right? It's it, For me, you could really see it like, I'm not that passionate, Why? Right? Why would I sell you that? What, what are you solving with, with doing that, right? But whatever, that's a whole um, other story. So again, supply and demand has to be a priority and then you need to be passionate and skillful about it. And skillful in the sense that you, you have to know that you have some skills, you already have it. If you're utilizing Facebook on your cell phone, guess what, you are consuming the content. You could use a, utilize it to your advantage and you can go ahead and produce content so people can buy things from you and you know, your business can take off. Uh, point number two here is start new or tap into existing tax tap into existing and here I want to lay out five things and these five things come from uh, the SBA, the Small Business Administration, and what they say. So let's get right into it. So here at this point, it's do you want to start something brand new or do you want to tap into an existing source? For example, let's say that you just graduated from nursing school, right? Do you really want to start your own nursing facility? or do you want to go and join um, join a hospital or another you know group of nurses that are doing this thing together right so that's kind of the the thing that we're looking at next not the right team so I'm pointing out all of these things that was done by the SBA uh, which is the the Small Business Administration and this is uh, Office of Advocacy, their 2018 Frequently Asked Questions. Okay, and one of these things is very, very important, which is number four, and then the final one is pricing. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. So start a new or tap into something existing. If you're gonna start a new business from scratch, again, you wanna consider the marketing, the sales, the customer service, the administration, the accounting, and the profit. That, the, that's basics of business. If you don't consider any of that stuff before you start, you might fail. And again, maybe you have a really good idea and you become successful and I wish you the best, but uh, you could probably agree with me and say, hey, yeah, at some point I needed to figure out marketing and sales. At some point I needed to administer my business better. At some point I had to hire an accountant so those principles are exactly the same, okay? So it, do you start something new or do you tap into something existing? According to the SBA, and this is from the Office of Advocacy 2018 Frequently Asked Questions, 80% of businesses that start survive year number one, right? So give yourself a, a, a nice applause, give yourself a hug if you survived year number one. 
45 to 51 percent survive past five years so that means in between year number two and year number five if a hundred businesses started let's just do the numbers here if a hundred businesses started so this is year zero right year number one there's 80 of them left so between year two and number five there's 45 to 51 percent that's left and then guess what year number 10 there's only 30 that are left so that means that if you start a business if you're one of these individuals that start a business brand new today within the first year you have a 20 percent chance of failure okay between year two and year number five you have a 50 percent chance of failure and between and up to year 10 you actually have 70 percent chance of failure so there's a 30 percent success and it's not guaranteed this is just based on statistics and again the SBA is a very large thing let me see I got some comments here um, cool uh, so you know this is just what's going on so again you have a 70 percent chance of failure you might have heard that before so when you're considering about tapping into an existing business this is very important when you're considering about tapping into an existing business did the company just launch okay now there's two ways of looking at it if it's a very very successful ceo let's say uh who can we use here jeff bezos right let's say jeff bezos is launching a business and there's an opportunity for you to join his team becoming a home-based business individual and you can join him well guess what he started amazon and i think he's been pretty pretty successful so you there's probably more than a 30 percent chance that his next business will be successful now again that's jeff bezos he, he has some reputation he has some uh skills he has some track record of things that have worked now he has a whole bunch of things that haven't worked as well but anyways uh so you know do you want to join jeff bezos or do you want to look into something that's brand new they've never had a business before they've never had a job before they they don't know what it's like to be in business they're starting something brand new guess what they might be one of those 20 percent that fail unless their product is really really good there's a lot of high demand for it unless they're really really passionate unless they have the skill set or they hire the people with the skill set right so all of those things are very important to consider when you're tapping into an existing business uh, a lot of people for example hate the direct sales or, or network marketing companies because they say oh well you know these companies start off and then all of a sudden they go out of business or whatever yeah look at the numbers you know 20 percent of all businesses that start up fail within year number one 50 percent fail between year two and five 70 percent fail within you know uh the first 10 years so guess what if you were to if, right now if i was in the position that i say hey you know what i'm ready to uh explore this uh direct sales network marketing industry what are the opportunities that are out there one of the questions that i believe you should ask is hey when was the company you know established when did you guys start doing business well you know we saw that there's a whole bunch of people looking for home base and we're just starting today the the, the numbers are there right if you go ahead and go with one of these companies and tomorrow they're no longer in business or next year they're not in business it's it's the numbers are there okay versus if you're saying hey how long have you guys been well we're still relatively new but we've been actually on the market for 12 years 14 years 15 years right they're not this 100 year old company which again it's great to join those because they probably have all of the things that we discussed their marketing their sales their advertising their administration all of those things have probably been figured out for them to survive 100 years so again that's a good thing but at the same time i think the sweet spot for these home-based businesses direct sales network marketing whatever you want to call it i think is somewhere between that five uh actually that seven to ten year period if those companies have been around for at least five to seven years or past the 10 year period they're probably going to continue to do business and they've done certain things well in order to still be in business today okay so 
That's the first one. The reasons that business fail, again, is no market need. If the service or product that they provide, nobody needs them, again, supply versus demand. That's why I put it right up here. The second one, and again, this is according to the SBA Office of Advocacy 2018 Frequently Asked Questions, not enough capital. That's why your accounting has to be important. Remember how we said that if your business makes $98,000 a year, but if you spend in order to service the customer, do the advertising, do the accounting, 108,000 and you're in the negative 10,000, how long can you do that? For the first year, for the first two years, yes, you might be able to pull that off. But if you do that consistently for 100 years and every year you're losing money, you're losing money, you better have some other source of income or whatever to, to sustain that business. Okay, so, uh, so that's not enough capital. Number three, not the right team. And this is huge. This is very, very important. The people that you work around with, the people that you surround yourself, I don't care if they're on Facebook or on Instagram or on Snapchat or TikTok or all these other platforms, you better like those people. Because if you're part of a team of individuals that you don't respect, that you don't like what is it that they do, that they don't respect you, that they don't at least show you the right resources, that they might not be, you know, number one, this is your business. So get that through your head, it's your business. But if in that business you don't like anyone and nobody likes you, why would you stay there, right? If we're going to the movies together and you wanna see a horror film and I wanna see a comedy movie, you have the choice of saying, no, I'm gonna go and pay my whatever, 20 bucks to go and see the horror movie while I go and watch my comedy movie. That's perfectly fine, go your separate ways. So not having the right team is huge. Competition. I think one of the biggest mistakes that I've heard people say is, oh, you know, our product is so good, there is no competition, nobody else has this. You're right. I can guarantee you go and look at any product or any service, there is at least one other individual that is doing maybe not exactly the same thing, but very, 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 very 99.9% .9 similar. Maybe they're using the color red in their drink and you're using the color blue and they call it Gatorade and you call it Gatorade. There's competition out there. So, you know, understand that there's always going to be competition. And look at the, the, the funny thing is the last one is pricing. Why is pricing the last one? The reason is because when we look at all this stuff, if you're skilled, if your product is really good, if you're passionate about it, if the market needs it, the price doesn't matter, right? I think yesterday I was watching something live uh, from Brad Lee and he was saying, hey, guess what? If I woke you up tomorrow and said, hey, let's go to wherever let's let's run a mile down the road and I'm gonna wait for you with a bag of 200 million dollars right you would probably wake up and you would go and run there with a mile to get that bag I don't care if you can't run or whatever now he said but the only catch is that tomorrow you know you can't wake up which means okay you got your money today you enjoy 24 hours and the day after that you can't wake up would you sacrifice your life for that sum of money, right? Some people might say yes, some people might say no. So at the end of the day, price is not that important. If you can solve that individual's problem, if you believe, if you're passionate, if your product is good, if your service is good, and it uh, you know, services that individual and solves their problem, the money doesn't matter. That's why it's down here on pricing. Now again, you need to understand that there's a market out there you need to understand that there's a competition out there and you need to understand that competition sometimes is price. What do I mean by that? If you're selling this water bottle and it's pretty good, it holds water for, I don't know, uh, 12 hours, it stays cold or whatever, or stays warm and it costs $20 and you're selling something similar that holds water cold for, you know, 48 hours, let's say four times the, 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 the time but your bottle costs a hundred dollars i might weigh my option and be like well this 20 ounce of water i'm probably going to drink it in about an hour and a half so for me to keep something cold or hot for 48 hours and pay 200 dollars when i can buy this for 20 doesn't really make sense maybe yours is made out of gold and there's a market for that 
but again, you, you kind of see where, where I'm going to. So it has to make sense. All right. Um, so I'm going to uh, actually let me let me go ahead and erase this and then I will give you my tips and we're coming to the end of this. I can't see your comments if you're putting your comments, but I promise you that I will review it after I'm done with this video and I will comment on it. Tips, right? There's always tips and what are tips? I think tips are just uh, those things. I guess the bartenders will disagree with me on what tips are, but uh, tips are the things that you learn, right? As you go through this stuff. And I think if we share the tips that we go through, the people don't have to go through those same things to figure out those same damn problems, right? So give tips as you learn, okay? So tip, uh, I'm not gonna number this because it's not really a number thing, but what are the tips? So one of the tips is, uh, you know, don't stop, stop your main source of income. All right, and I'll show you what I mean by this. So uh, my wife and I, you know, we decided to buy a property um, early enough in 2011 and a cash flow and all that stuff. At that time, I did have a job. I was working um, and, and, you know, I was going into an office from eight o'clock in the morning until five o'clock at night. All of that stuff was happening. So we decided to invest some money in order to have other money to come from our investments. So when I decided to go into business in 2013, I, I didn't have other sources of income coming in other than my investment property. So that was a source of income. Now, if you have no source of income saying that right now, you go and you work 40 hours, 20 hours, 168 hours in a week, and you get a paycheck that comes in, and you spend all of it, and you have no savings, and you have nothing, just because we're in the middle of this thing, don't be like, hey, uh, Mr. Joe, you know what? Two weeks from now, when all this thing is over and the office opens up, I'm not coming in. I got this home-based business now, and that's it. See you later. Don't call me ever again. This isn't going to work. Be careful, right? <laughs> right? I, I don't think you want to do that. Uh, you want to plan, plan for one to three months of unstable unstable monies right and the reason that I didn't want to call it like low or uh, little or or big or whatever it's just gonna be unstable and the reason that it's unstable is because you're just starting a home-based business you might have a whole bunch of people that are really interested in your keto shake and you might sell 5,000 of them because guess what? Everyone is stuck at home. They can't go to the supermarket. Their Walmart is closed. It's 200 miles down the road. The UPS guy and the you know postal service is still delivering. So they might order 200 boxes of keto drinks and great, everything is going good, right? But that might not happen. It might take one to three months for you to do that. So unless you have some savings to hold you up or unless you have some other sources of income like your husband or wife is working your partner is working you have investment income that pays you every single month you have dividends from stocks or other investments whatever the case is right plan for one to three months of unstable income and this can range from zero to negative x number to positive y number whatever the numbers are is irrelevant okay just know that it can fluctuate one day you can get zero the next day you can lose money because you might spend more in advertising and marketing than the actual sales that you make another day you might only spend a hundred dollars in advertising your products if you even decide to advertise but you might get a thousand dollars in sales right but guess what if right here week number one let's say you spend a thousand dollars in advertising you made zero sales the next week you spend zero dollars in advertising and you make one thousand dollars in sales and those are your profits let's just say what's your net income zero 
You invested a thousand dollars week one, you got zero back. You invested zero dollars in week two, you got a thousand dollars back. You, you see what I'm saying? Like you didn't make anything. Okay. So this is it's why it's unstable, and this is why it's good to keep records. Okay. So this I think is a is a point that you can all agree with me. Learn something new every day. Okay. New every day. Every day. So learn something new every day. Now it doesn't have to be books. It could be YouTube videos. It could be news about something that's specific. You know, it could be industry standard publications. For example, if you're going to go into the whole health and wellness and you're really interested about uh, I don't know CBD product which is big right now or you're really interested about these keto things go and look up some industry thing you might read the health journal or Times magazine in the health section and see what they're saying Wall Street Journal you might watch the news you might find a few YouTube videos of what things are working for people right you also want to tap into books on sales and marketing right so sales and marketing And why is this important? Because every single business, as we looked at uh, the previous thing, every single business needs to have sales and every single business, as they market, they increase their sales, hence they get more customers. So you at least want to understand what it takes. I'm not telling you to become a professional salesperson. I think you already are a salesperson because you're looking to move into the next thing, right? So you're selling yourself into what's next, right? I'm not telling you to become a professional marketer, but at least understand it. Understand that if someone is a vegan and you're selling them Omaha steaks, I don't care if you're selling your Omaha steaks at 99 cents a pound and typically they're a hundred dollars a pound. I don't know what the numbers are, but those vegans are not going to buy your steak. So stop advertising and marketing to vegans who don't eat meat, right? That's marketing. That makes a lot of sense, okay? This point is a point that I fought for a long time, but anybody that is in sales or in business will agree with me. This is a numbers game. Focus on the people that you can help. Can I please borrow your calculator real quick? So focus on the people that you can help. And what do I mean by this? It's very, very simple, okay? And let's just do it this way. Let's say you're in the United States of America. And right now we know that the population is about, uh, is about 300 million, okay? And let's just say that you're selling a health product and it cures cancer, let's just say. I don't, I don't know what product does that. The first thing that you would say is, okay, what percent of the population currently has cancer? Let's say it's 10%. And again, I'm, I'm making these numbers up. I haven't researched this. I'm just giving you an example. So what this means is that 300 million Americans is our population. It's about 350, but I'm just saying 300. 10% of the people have cancer. So that means 30 million people have cancer. If your product can cure these people, okay, and check this out. This is going to blow your mind. That's 30 million individuals, okay, that need your product to cure them, right? Now, let's just say, based on all the numbers that are out there, that when you start talking to this 330 million people group, um, that you're really, really bad at sales and only 1% of them. 1% of them buy your product or service. 1% of 30 million is, let's say, one, two, 300,000, okay? If I did that right, 10% is 3 million, 10%, yes. So 300,000 people. Now check this out. Let's say your sales process lasts five minutes five minutes okay so if your sales process lasts five minutes 
for you to talk to each one individual one time, 300,000 times five is 1 million, yeah, 1 million 500,000 minutes divided by 20, uh, 60 minutes in an hour. That's 2,500 hours. Okay? Now, let's say you work eight hours a day. Heck, let's say you work 16 hours a day from, from uh, no, let's not give you 16 hours so you have some time or whatever because you're starting this business because you want some freedom, right? But let's say you work 12 hours a day. So you get up 7 o'clock in the morning, you make breakfast, you send your kids or your loved ones to work, school, whatever. You get on the computer 8 a.m., you get in front of your phone, and then until 8 p.m. for 12 hours straight, you're talking to people, you're doing Zoom calls, you're doing this stuff, and you're only spending five minutes with them, okay? So that's 12 hours per day. So divided by 12 hours in a day, it would take you 2,083 days to talk to 300,000 people for five minutes once. Now, let's say that you worked five days a week, 50 weeks, that's 250 days. So if I take 2,083 to 100, 250 days, it would take you 8.3 years, okay? And I'm gonna do it big right here, 8.3 years to talk to 300,000 people that need your product or service that cures cancer for five minutes, five minutes, okay? It would take you 8.3 years to talk to them once. Now, let me ask you a question. If you had a product that you knew, you knew that it could cure cancer, right? There's no word of a doubt about it. They take your product for 60 days and, you know, 300,000, 30,000, 300,000 people don't have to die. What would you do? Would you spend your time talking for, I don't know, an hour to a person that is clearly not going to buy? Because number one, they either don't have cancer they're not interested in solving their cancer problem. They're not interested in doing that. They just want to live their life peacefully and not think about it. Would you spend an hour talking to them if you knew that it was going to take you eight and a, eight and a half years, 8.3 years, to speak with 300,000 people for five minutes one time? And I don't know if you would agree with me or not, any salesperson that's out there, you probably have to spend more than five minutes talking with someone in order to complete a sale to solve their problem this is 300,000 people that's 1% okay 1% of the 30 million that's affected out there so as bad as you feel and as as your mind says hey you know i i really want to solve help this person or whatever there's 299, 999,000 people that are waiting for your phone call desperately, but you've decided to stop and give up because it was a bad call, right? So it's a numbers game. You have to understand that. And the last thing is, so focus on the people that you can help. And the last point right here is invest your earnings okay and this is where uh, cash flow quadrant and the richest man in Babylon those two books can really help you out because again right now in the situation that you're in let's take let, let's take a screenshot and let's go forward five years forget about ten years let's go forward five years if you do exactly what you're doing right now and we go through a similar situation again what is your game plan okay not only that but if you've been working at the same place for 40 let's say not 45 let's say you've been working there for five years 
and you're gotten a raise for a dollar, but you still have to go in the office, they treat you like crap. In five years from now, will your situation truly change, right? That's why you're probably looking at this stuff, okay? So invest in your earnings. Why is that? Because what's gonna happen is, I definitely don't wanna start a home-based business and work that business for 10 years and the day that I stop working, all of a sudden I don't have income, I don't have money coming in. You're probably looking for some sort of business, some sort of structure that you can go in there you can have a three to five year game plan, okay, or a 10 year game plan or a 20 year game, but you have a game plan, number one. You have a game plan where you say, okay, this is my game plan. Three to five years, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna invest part of my earnings. I'm gonna live on whatever 50%, 60% of my earnings, invest the rest, and five years from now, I can say that I'm financially free, okay? Because the definition of financially free, it's not a million dollars, okay? Financially free is if your expenses are $10,000 per month and the income that you have coming in is $20,000 per month, as long as you keep your expenses at $10,000 per month and your income is higher that comes in, and again, that could be passive income from your investments, that could be active income from consulting, it could be active income from sales or whatever. As long as that number is there, you're free. You don't ever have to work another day in your life. And that's where it's good to have investment income, passive income, okay? Guess what? Your business is an investment. When you build your team of salespeople, of individuals, that's an investment in your business. Don't feel bad if 10 years from now your team's production is bringing you enough residual income. If you invest it into real estate or stocks, bonds, Forex, Bitcoin, something that you research, again, make sure you read The Richest Man in Babylon because he talks about investing in there. Make sure you know what you're investing in. If you know what's going on, wow, I've been going on here, I think Instagram cut off. If you've been going on that for uh, you know more than, uh, make sure you know what you're investing in because the last thing that you want to do right now is start buying stocks just because everything is on sale at the moment, but you have no idea what stock you're buying and all of a sudden you're losing money, right? So learning to invest is important. So I know that this video helped you. Uh, if you want more information on any of this stuff, any of the books that I recommended, make sure you reach out to me. If you're looking for a home-based business, I do have something that's available it might not be for you i don't work with everyone i'm very selective on the people that join my team uh but again i truly believe that this can help you in whatever business that you're looking into the most important thing that you can do right now is research and align yourself with something that works for you okay don't just sit on the sidelines take a two-week vacation and think that everything is going to go back to normal because we've already seen we've experienced unless you're taking care of yourself your loved ones, your community, guess what? Nobody else is. And if you're relying on somebody else or the government or whatever to take care of you, the bad news is, is that we're gonna have more bad times. So get yourself prepared. So with that, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what additional information I can send you and I'll see you on the next video. Hashtag replay, rewatch it on YouTube. Let me know how I can help. See you on the next video.